Quick review. I really wanted this to be about a 7.6 out of 10, but when you dig into this, you'll notice there's some pretty big issues and that's what gives it a 5 out of 10. Just take a look at this menu here. It shows such vibrance and, and really good attention to detail for the art style that it was trying to present. Though I think there's some, some cluttered stuff here on the side, like you get a good idea that these people had some passion about their game. And even moving here into like the tutorial, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty blown away with how impressive the graphic fidelity is and the, the sticking to it that the art direction went. Like listen to this cutesy voice acting. Today's edition of Monsters from Outer Space is called How to Survive If Your Tourist Liner Is Attacked by Monsters from the Depth of Space. In which this is some pretty good voice acting for a game like this. Although I do want to show you one of my favorite mispronunciations so far. Frankie's ready to face absolutely nothing. Why is Leslie? What happened to her? Oh. Oh, Le I thought Leslie was a bitch, but okay. One of the crew turned out to be a monster pretending to be a human. Mm -hmm. This is the Emerald Varanus of Carax, one of the most dangerous creatures from the nearby galaxies. It can impersonate any human by creating impersonate? a mass hallucination. Did I hear impersonate? Impersonate. Impersonate. It can impersonate. No. Impersonate. It can impersonate. No, it's not even close. Impersonate. Damn it. Anyways, in case you haven't figured out, this is sort of an XCOM-like turn-based monsters versus human things. The bad guys live inside some fake humans, and the good guys try to figure out who the fake humans are. Kind of mafia or werewolf-like uh, on top of XCOM. All right, cool. Play the tutorial, figure out how to do it. Sometimes you're bad, sometimes you're good. Got it. Now, the first hurdle comes actually trying to start the game. Maybe I'm just getting old and I'm out of touch as I near my 30s here, but uh, I wasn't expecting I have to press the barcode to play online. I have to press this, I see. That wasn't immediately obvious, you know. Anyways, after a worryingly long two minutes and an odd one out of six players available, the game decides to start. Oh my god, something's happening. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, this one. Uh, go to the crate. Now even though I'm a little bit confused here, I'm also starting to get slightly worried. Uh, cause I made that action pretty quickly, yet it appeared to be the last one. And everyone moved right afterwards. Scanner. Well, trying to put that pesky thought aside, I run around yes, Christmas fucking town and here. take a look at what I can find. And since this is an online turn-based game, it kind of slows down and feels a little chuggish. Like, uh, it really gets rid of that, that dread that an impending monster doom should have. Well, maybe that's just me. After having collected a gun and what appears to be my new best friend, I'm gonna move towards the center of the area to see who's been murdering all the other people. Mm, some of the heroes are dying. In the dead center of Christmas Town, you see Claudia Neal, who's delicately guarding whatever the fuck's in the middle of the present palace there. I found to go there. Now, as chuggish and clunky as it may be, I'm, I'm interested, I'm invested. I, I'm worried Claudia Neal might be one of the monsters. So we're gonna go investigate that. How do I activate this thing? I think it said to activate the ventilation system. Oh, there's a monster over here. Can I see him through the... Let's go get him. Let's go shoot that monster. Did... Wait. Could I shoot through that?
This is probably one of my big problems with this, is I don't feel like the line of sight mechanics are clearly drawn out. Like, how am I supposed to know that one can shoot through that fucking window that Claude Van Damia did to kill the monster here? Or to shoot it, I should say. And is somehow still shooting. Oh. Why did you shoot at me? Tom Drake. Rude boy. She shot all of us. What a bitch. Oh no, oh no, oh no. How dead am I? I blame Tom. Oh, but I get to be still alive with Gato? That's fine. And much of the game ends up going like this, where uh, I play now as Gato, and the other team members go around and randomly shoot things until they die. Uh, it's not clear to me how they figured out who the monsters are, but, you know, I'll take a free win if I can get a free win. Ah, and there you have it. The reason all of the things make sense now. They were all bots. That's how they could see through walls, that's how they knew who was the bad guy, and that's why it took two minutes for the game to start. Because they threw me in a pity lobby filled with bots. Um, how about we just take a look at how many people still play this game, actually. And there you have it. Uh, this was probably me. Um, it used to be a popular game at one point. 24 hour peak. Four people. All time. Like it used. Look at that. People used to play this game. But now it's just dead. And sad. And this lady doesn't know what to do with her baby anymore because of the Equifax breach. You can't live like that. Hey, if your turds made it to the end of the video. Oh. Go away. If you turds made it to the end of the video, that means you uh, at least are slightly entertained by my shit. And so why don't you check out my book? I wrote this in the last eight months that I've been gone. So you can get on Amazon. You can go to theanimalpenisbook.com. Learn all you want about animal vaginas, penises, how many nipples the most nippled animal has in the world. It's 27 nipples. All right. You have fun now. Bye-bye.